Trojan fans, thanks for joining us today for an update with Director of Athletics, Brent Jones. And Brent, we'll jump into this uh, questions here for you. The Football Excellence Fund was launched in conjunction with Coach Summerall's uh, announcement as the new head football coach here at Troy University. Initial goals were set for $100,000 by the end of December, and then $250,000 is the overarching goal by April of 2022. Can you provide an update on where things stand currently as we uh, enter into the Football Excellence Fund? Well, thanks, Kyle, for having me on. It, it's been a busy time. Uh, I know we're going to go through everything that happened, transpired at the end of the year, but it's been a busy, fun time. Hopefully all of our fans uh, have had a great holiday season and are off to a great new year as well. But uh, we obviously released our football excellence fund um, in conjunction with the hiring of John Summerall as our next head football coach. We had an initial goal of 100000 by December 31st. Within 28 days, we blew past that number. Uh, and then our overall goal is uh, by April 15th, it's 250000 but currently we're at $160,000. We received gifts from upwards of $1,000 upwards to, uh, to $50,000 and everywhere in between. And so our fans have continued to step up time and time again. This, this fund and these resources go directly back to our football program. And so that's going to be used in conjunction with Coach Summerall and myself, whatever we feel like is the biggest need, whether that be nutrition, whether that be technology, whether that be analytics, uh, a lot of things that we're working on right now, but we're excited about our fans. We're excited about this campaign as our fans continue to step up time and time again. And talking about the hiring of Coach Summerall, can you walk us through that process a little bit about what, what all took place during that search process and what ultimately led to the hiring of Coach John Summerall to lead the Troy football program? Well, first off, I think everyone has seen his incredible energy, his incredible enthusiasm, his passion and understanding of Troy University. And so this was a wide open search. And obviously, when the decision was made that we need to move on from Coach Lindsey, uh, there were tons and tons of uh, people who expressed interest, as well as doing our due diligence uh, to make sure that we had a very, very deep candidate pool. I started with about 50 different um targets narrowed that down to about 25 we used us we didn't have a search firm but we did use a uh selection committee that really assisted uh with this and so as we went from 50 to 25 down to 10 to 8 uh, to five and four, uh, we feel like we got the best. But I will tell you this, the candidate profile, we built out a very, very uh, detailed candidate profile of what we felt like we needed uh, for our next leader in our football program needed to have. And that was someone with energy, enthusiasm, someone who could connect with players, connect with our fans, someone who was a dogged recruiter, dynamic communicator, someone who had been at multiple different places and had multiple different mentors as well as networks. Because you need to be able to see from different variable parts uh, and different variable coaches uh, of how things can run. And so uh, when we really looked at all those things, uh, there was one clear cut candidate uh, that, that we wanted to be our next head coach, and that's been Coach Summerall. He's hit the ground running. But I will tell you this, this was the most exhausting this is the most thorough search that we've had uh, involved our letter winners. And so sat down with them for almost 75 minutes and had, uh, I believe, all upwards of almost 75 people on this call. And I wanted to hear from them, spoke to them once, spoke to our football team twice, spoke to our leaders of our football team as well, wanted to get what they wanted to see in the program, wanted to see uh, the pluses, the minuses, where we could get better, did a SWOT analysis of where I felt like our program was in the Sunbelt Conference, the group of five, as well as the FBS. And uh, I will tell you this, I think we had a home run hire in John Summerall. Our fans are, are very excited about it. Our team is very excited about it. Obviously, the news yesterday that just came out, Carlton Marshall is coming back for his fifth year now. That's extremely exciting. As well as we've had some people who entered the transfer portal who then pulled out of the transfer portal because they want to be able to play for Coach Summerall. So we're very excited about the direction and the leadership that he's able to offer our football team. And similarly, there was a uh, search taking place during a similar time with the soccer program as well. Can you talk a little bit about the process that led to Robert Lane being named as the head soccer coach here at Troy? So before we go any further, I really want to thank Nicole Waters. She was our interim coach for soccer this year. And so the day that we hired Skylar Mead as our baseball coach was the day that we also found out that Judd O'Connor was going to leave uh, our Troy program and go back to Division II school where it's his home um, and with his uh, with his wife and his young child, his infant as well. And so we wished him well, but we decided because it was two weeks out from the season beginning that uh, Nicole Waters was going to be our interim coach. She led a, a great season and uh, really appreciate her efforts. 
as we went through this, we wanted a proven winner. And so again, we did another candidate pool, candidate profile, I should say. We had a very deep candidate uh, pool. We interviewed a lot of people. We spoke to a lot of people. It was very exhaustive. We had almost a five-week process for this. And we just kept coming back to Coach Robert Lane, just kept coming back to him. His energy, his enthusiasm, I will tell you this, he's a proven winner. He's been a head coach three different times, uh, once inside the state at the University of Montevallo, as well as uh, he's obviously has Power 5 experience with a top 50 program in the nation, uh, as he was the number one assistant at the University of Georgia uh, this past year, actually coached an All-American, their first All-American. And so uh, what he brings is dynamic personality. He's a grinder. Uh, he's one of the best recruiters in the state. Uh, every connection that we had. And so we're really looking forward to that. I was, uh, I had the privilege of being able to introduce uh, Coach Summerall to the football team. And I had the privilege of being able to introduce Coach Lane to our soccer team via Zoom. And so both of those uh, reactions have been great to see from our student athletes, very positive in nature. Everyone's excited, ready to go. And so I really think that from a soccer standpoint, as well as a football standpoint, that our trajectory uh, is high and our momentum is, is real. Talking about trajectory being high, the Sunbelt Conference just continues to get stronger and stronger, it seems, uh, through our current, current membership, but also with our new members coming in as Southern Miss, Old Dominion, Marshall, and James Madison are set to join the conference in the coming years here. Can you give us an update about some uh, moving, movement within the league as we prepare to welcome these new members into the league? Well, I'll tell you this, knowing, you know, there's a lot of media out there that's talked about uh, whether they're going to come in in 22 or 23, 24, whatever that may be. Everybody's guessing from the American, uh, as well as from the SEC, as well as from Conference USA, they have members coming in and out, as well as the Sunbelt Conference. And so I think as the leadership of the of the Sunbelt Conference for the CEOs, as well as the ADs, we're going to get together uh, late January, early February, really sit down and figure out what's the best time for all parties involved, as well as our new New members, Southern Miss, Marshall, ODU, JMU, as well as our current members, too. And so uh, we're really excited about those four that are coming in. I think they add a lot of, uh, of passionate fan bases, a lot of winning cultures as well. You look at it not just from football, you look at it from softball, baseball. Uh, you have two teams that have been in the uh, the College World Series with JMU as well as with Southern Miss. You have two top 25 programs in baseball and softball. You also have a great, uh, you have three football programs that, that are consistently bowl eligible. You have JMU, a, a top 10 FCS program. And so I think it's going to add a lot to the Sunbelt Conference. And so we'll have to see exactly when they come on board, but whenever they do it's going to only strengthen the Sunbelt Conference. Our men's and women's basketball teams are both off to tremendous starts right now. Both teams have 10 and 5 records, which combined is the best start of both of those teams combined together in, in recent years here. So a great start for both programs. Both have entered into the conference schedule here now. Women's basketball off to a great start with a 1-0 record. Men's basketball 1-1. They'll be back home this upcoming week here. Let's talk a little bit about basketball. Both Coach Scott Cross and Coach Shanda Rigby, the success of their teams and the excitement as we get deeper into conference play now. Look at let's start with Shanda Rigby. Uh, won five conference championships in, in the last seven years, or, or been to five postseason appearances in the last seven years, uh, and, and they had an incredible run to end the year. And then they've started it very, very hot as well. But to beat a top 100 team, her first P5 victory against Mississippi State to win that tournament, but then also to go at home against MTSU, who in the last 20 games we were one and 19 against. That's a top 50 RPI, top 50 net for us to be able to beat them at home. <clears throat> <clears throat> simply outstanding. But I will tell you this, Coach Rigby and her staff do a phenomenal job. Um, but the thing that I'm probably the most proud of is obviously we played a good, very good Coastal Carolina women's basketball team, 10-1 and one, on Thursday night at Trojan Arena. <clears throat> Had a very good crowd, um, but our team – was down to eight people, uh, eight players, because of COVID-19 policies. Uh, and so we had a few people out, a few people injured. And so typically we, we go about 15 deep, and we had eight players. So you play five, you had three reserves. For us to go out there and beat uh, a, a top two, top three team in the league who had only had one loss outside of conference just speaks to the volumes of what Coach Rigby as well as what her players uh, have done. And so that is the grittiest performance that I've seen. Now let's transition to, to men's basketball. Uh, this is the best start they've had in almost 20 years. Combined men and women, this is the best start we've ever had. We have the most wins combined in the Sunbelt Conference. And so uh, obviously we're one and one on the men. We dropped a really tough game to, to UTA. I will say this, we were up five with two and a half minutes left to go. 
And so, again, we still have a young team that, that's getting together. But for us to go down to FAU, down in Boca Raton, to be able to win that tournament, to play a really, really tough Mercer team on the road who had just beaten Georgia State, just beaten Coastal Carolina, just beaten Georgia Southern, for us to beat them on their home court, simply outstanding. And so I really do like uh, where our men's and women's basketball team is headed. The Sunbelt Conference is tough. It really is. Uh, you see that on both sides. And so we'll see where it all shakes out. But you got to love where we're at currently and how hard we're playing. Talking about basketball still here as well. A huge event is coming up here next Saturday, January 15th. It's going to be the one time we have a doubleheader during the conference schedule here as women's basketball hosts ULM at 2 p.m. And men's basketball will host Georgia State at 4 p.m. It's basketball letter winners day as both programs will welcome back their letter winners. And it's a huge celebration of the 30th anniversary of the highest scoring game in NCAA history, 258 points. Believe it was scored by Coach Don Maestri's team back in 1992. And we'll have him as well as his entire team coming back for that game as well. Brent, looking at all the promotions taking place, it's obviously a huge event on the calendar. A lot of our fans know exactly where they were or they were in Sartain Hall when that game took place. How exciting is it to have this celebration, both for the letter winners as well as for this team in particular? It's extremely exciting. It's our breast, it's our annual breast cancer awareness game for our women's basketball team as well. You, you talked about it, doubleheaders. Our, our fan base loves doubleheaders. Uh, it's one ticket, two games. Uh, it's simply outstanding. And so uh, we're going to have uh, Troy Tate t-shirts uh, for the men and the women's game. You want to get there early because we're going to hand these all out for the women's game. And so you want to be there. But uh, I think our fans are going to be really, really excited to be able to have 95% of the 25018, that's the 30th anniversary of setting the NCAA record, to have 95% of them to be able to come back. We also have the officials there that were at the game. Coach Maestri, who I've been able to speak to uh, a lot recently, he's really excited about being able to come back. And fans, don't forget, you know, the court is named after Coach Maestri. And so we're going to pay homage to him and to be able to have that. Uh, it's Letter Winners Day. We're looking at having anywhere between 35 to 40 letter winners come back on the men's and women's side. Uh, so we're really excited about it. The special part of this is, is obviously we're going to support breast cancer awareness on our women's basketball side. We also have commemorative uh, rally towels. We're going to be able to have commemorative Troy State t-shirts. Uh, and then at the same time, our men's basketball team is going to pay homage to the 30th anniversary by wearing one time only Troy State uniforms, the exact uniforms that they wore against DeVry University 30 years ago. And so we're looking forward to this upcoming weekend. We're about a week and a half away uh, and making big plans for it. Talking about those events, you can tell it's obviously key to have the fan support, having all the fans join us in Trojan Arena. But going a little bit further off of that, how critical is it to have fan support across the board for, for all of our sports? And, and we've seen great success where this past season the Trojans ranked second in Sunbelt Conference in football attendance. Um, how important and key is it to have fans attending uh, not just one event, but all of our events taking place for all of our sports? We just look at it across the board. Uh, volleyball has talked about it before, uh, how great our students are, how great our fans are. We, we have our, obviously we had our, our, our second annual basketball um, tip off event, uh, record crowd there, uh, football finishing second, the Sunbelt Conference. Uh, it's been exciting. Our fans continue to step up, whether it's football excellence fund, whether it's purchasing football, baseball, basketball season tickets, whether it's the, the first pitch banquet that we have coming up for baseball and softball, our fans continue to really take it to another level. And so I think that elevates our brand. It elevates our university. It elevates our athletic department. And again, so thankful for our fans uh, and what they've been able to do because we wouldn't be able to do it without them. And so from our social media engagement to our marketing, you, you've seen this recently in licensing efforts. I mean, our licensing efforts have just taken off, whether that's Dick Sporting Goods, whether that's Hibbets, whether that's Academy, whether that's local stores with Peter Millar, whether all these different brands, it really starts with our fans because they're the ones that have to go out there and purchase. And we have different ideas and things like that. And so uh, again, our fans are, I think are the, are the best. I know they're the best in the Sunbelt Conference and I think they're the best uh, in FBS. Mentioned volleyball here as well, but they just finished up their season not too long ago, and we're actually in the postseason for the second consecutive year. This was their first time, though, to actually host postseason action as a program in their history. How, how pivotal is that for the volleyball program to go back to back years to the postseason and then also host postseason matches in Trojan Arena? Something we've never done before. Uh, two years ago, we went to the first first postseason that we've ever had. And so Coach Lauer, uh, you know, his hashtag is building 
building a dynasty, building an empire. And that's what he's doing. And so it is, uh, he is building a juggernaut there in volleyball. And so we have beautiful Trojan arena, obviously through his fundraising efforts, as well as through the university support on uh, Chancellor Jack Hawkins Jr. Um, and his amazing leadership and support, we were able to, to purchase uh, uh, this brand new volleyball court. That's the only one in the state of Alabama, the only one in, in the Sunbelt Conference that sets us apart. But what we've been do, able to do on the court is simply outstanding. Uh, and again, time and time again, we want to compete for conference championships. That's what we talk about across the board. We talk about winning in the classroom, winning in the community, winning on the playing field, winning in the stands, but we want to compete for conference championships. We want to do it the right way. Uh, and we want to have postseason appearances And our volleyball program under the leadership of uh, Josh Lauer is, is doing that. And I'm so appreciative of his leadership. And finally, as we've moved into 2022, basketball season is in full force right now. Baseball and softball season beginning later on in February. Those seasons are getting closer and closer to beginning here for us. But before we start those seasons, a lot of events taking place in January. And one of those, one of those is the first pitch banquet, the inaugural first pitch banquet that is to support both baseball and softball. Friday, January 28th, the evening prior to men's basketball hosting South Alabama and Trojan Arena on Saturday, January 29th. Talk a little bit about that weekend, how pivotal it is for our fans to come back, support our baseball and softball student athletes, but also get a chance to come in and catch the basketball game against South Alabama, a huge in-state rival. Well, let, let's talk about our softball team and what they did last year. First time going to the NCAA regional in 26 years, one of four teams in the Sunbelt Conference that was able to get it at large. Uh, we had our first victory uh, in the NCAA postseason last year, took uh, a number two seed, uh, which really should have been a number one seed. You look at where they were, top 16 team in the nation. We took them to the wire, Clemson. We returned uh, almost 95% of that team as well. Uh, we only lost three seniors. And so we're really excited about the trajectory with Beth Mullins and her entire coaching staff, as well as our student athletes. So very excited about that. This is a chance for us to celebrate them, celebrate that amazing year, as well as look forward to it. And then obviously baseball, uh, being able to combine baseball and softball at the same time with Coach Mead and his staff and what they're doing. Very excited about where we head. But this is a chance for us uh, to really have a great weekend. So obviously Friday night, uh, we have a lot of fans coming in for this big rivalry. Uh, it's going to be battle of the belt basketball style on Saturday. And so uh, really looking forward to having a great time uh, Friday night and as well as on Saturday versus South Alabama. If Angie, you can get tickets for that event, the first pitch banquet that is, as well as for all the basketball games online at troytrojans.com backslash tickets. Brent, thanks so much for the time today for all this information regarding all the updates within Trojan Nation. And fans, you can keep up with all this information online at troytrojans.com. Thanks for joining us and go Trojans.